The human heart is vastly superior to any human artifact. Every second it undergoes a cycle of contraction and expansion, and it beats continually and faithfully for the duration of a human lifetime. It starts beating in the womb, and in 80 years it will beat about 2 billion times. The cardiac muscle itself consists of an interconnected network of billions of muscle cells, specially adapted to resist fatigue and contract autonomously without external activation or control. Within the cardiac muscle cells, there are trillions of tightly packed molecular arrays of contractile filaments whose regular rhythmical lengthening and shortening generate the cardiac cycle. At rest, each of us needs about a fourth of a liter of oxygen per minute to satisfy our energy needs. This involves the movement every minute of 100 trillion oxygen molecules across every square millimeter of the alveolar surface of the lungs. And with every contraction, the heart pumps 100 billion red blood cells through hundreds of kilometers of tiny capillaries. Coursing through the capillaries in the lungs, each of these tiny nanomachines carries 1 billion molecules of oxygen from the lungs to the tissues, each loosely bound to an iron atom in the hemoglobin. By the heart's unceasing activity, it ensures a bountiful supply of oxygen to provide us with the vital energy of life. Our current understanding of the heart and cardiovascular and respiratory systems took more than four centuries of heroic scientific endeavor. Achieving that knowledge was one of the greatest of scientific achievements. And today, no one doubts that the heart and lungs the red blood cells, the electron transport chains, and many other components of these systems are paragons of bioengineering, fine-tuned to derive metabolic energy from oxidations in complex organisms like ourselves. But we now know something else, something equally, if not even more remarkable. The adaptive wonder of the circulatory and respiratory systems depends ultimately on a vast suite of diverse elements of prior environmental fitness in nature. Without this prior fitness of nature, all the wondrous adaptive fine-tuning of the heart and circulation would be of no avail. To list and fully describe all the instances of prior fitness would fill many volumes, but let me briefly mention just three. First, without the prior environmental fitness of the radiation emitted by the sun, and without the transparency of the atmosphere to visual light, there would be no photosynthesis, and hence no oxygen, and no oxidations in the body to provide higher organisms like ourselves with the copious amounts of energy we need to satisfy our metabolic needs. Second, without the prior fitness of water and its astonishing array of unique properties to serve as the medium of the circulation, there would be no circulatory system. Finally, without the unique prior fitness of the atoms, of what are known as the transition metals, there would be no way to convert oxidations to metabolic energy. This is Michael Denton. I'm a biologist and a medical doctor. Join me in exploring these and other wonders of nature in my book, The Miracle of Man. <laughs>